This is the Nordic Animist Wall Calendar with the explanatory book, the Nordic Animist Year, which teaches you how to understand traditional Nordic calendar. This combines in contemporary form the runic calendar, which represents the solar and lunar, lunar cycles of light, and the premstar marks that uh, represents different holidays. You can order this stuff on the Nordic Animism webpage, but this video here is just a little introduction into this project on Nordic um, seasonal animism that I'm communicated in these products. My name is Rune Jani, I have a PhD in History of Religions, and I've been developing this calendar project in collaboration with the designer Avon Nilsson. Uh, we publish this wall calendar every year uh, from the Nordic Animism platform, so you'll be able to find the current calendar on our homepage. These two products uh, go together, but they can also stand alone. Uh, for instance, the book here can be taken just as an introduction to Nordic seasonal animism uh, that you can have and that you can read. The book is for any year, it's not tied to this particular year, um, but the calendar is, is also important because it give you in front of your eyes all these date for this specific year so they're there you know all on your wall also the ones that might be a little bit difficult to remember like the Disting moon which is the third full moon of the lunar year or Hulda's night which is the last Thursday before Christmas and so on. The wall calendar has taken care of marking all these dates on the specific year so you begin bringing this into your daily life um, and, and, and not just having it as a scholarly speculative thing that might be confined to the bookshelf, but as a beautiful thing that's in your living space. You have a wall calendar that you can hang in your room, which communicates traditional seasonal animism from the Nordic re region on an everyday basis. Um, and then of course you have the book that explains the whole thing. The background for this project is the idea of Nordic animism, which is a scholarly and also cultural activist perspective on Nordic history of religions, um, a concept that I've coined and launched and that I'm continuously developing. This is inspired by contemporary indigenous knowledge scholarship on how different indigenous peoples around the world are trying to maintain and recover their traditional culture on the premises of modernity. And uh, many indigenous peoples actually use calendar as a typical strategy uh, in order to try to maintain traditional ways of knowing live among contemporary people. Um, this takes into account that tradition is dynamic and it's transformational. So this calendar includes material from the Norse heathen past, uh, but it also uh, has more recent folklore uh, folkloric traditions and so on. The calendar and uh, the book are attempts to dialogue with the animist cultural heritage in a popularizing way because this new animist perspective, in my view, it must be brought into people's normal life and it must be brought out of this scholarly sphere that's sometimes dominated by impossible language. Now, I do know how to speak and read and write academic googly gook, you know, if I want to, I'm trying to stop. Uh, but, but, but here I'm trying to popularize this animist knowledge, making it relational, dialoguing into availability for people in order to relate to and engage with, right? And this is, of course, the way to actually recover the ways of knowing that used to be encoded in the way that people relate it to the turning of the seasons. I believe that this recovery of traditional knowledge perspective on North European culture has to build on practice people's practice. And I have a couple of different projects that try to work like this, work through practice. And the calendar is, is one of these. Uh, the project has been running for some years now, since I, I made this primitive test version of the calendar bag in 2017 and sent it to, to some friends. Probably thought I was kind of crazy. Uh, and uh, yeah, some, some years we have a uh, single artist and, and other years we have a theme that's illustrated by different people. In 2020 calendar year we had uh, the work of 
Uwe Behrendt, the amazing tattoo artist from the tattoo study Genungagab Art um, in 2000 and, uh, 2021. We had uh, uh, runes as a theme and different uh, artists illustrating that theme. And in 2022 calendar, we have the theme rituals. Um, and uh, I think in the future, we might uh, go back to also working with single artists and so on. So we're trying to show stuff that mediates between contemporary spaces and those worldviews of the past, sometimes the distant past, that we need as paths to recover traditional knowledge. Uh, the calendar is basically a traditional Scandinavian calendar, which is based on seasonal animism from Northern Europe. And uh, the entirety is condensed here in the design of the Nordic Wheel of Seasons, which is a traditional Nordic calendar in a circle shape. You also find this design, by the way, in the wall calendar, and you find it explained in the book, the, uh, uh, where there are explanations of the runic calendar, the prime staff marks, and so on. Uh, there are also traditional month names that express animist relating to the passing of the year. The lunar months are also marked for people who are interested in this very old but also very beautiful way of reckoning the months. Uh, and you can get all these things explained in detail in the book. So you can understand stuff like, for instance, loony solar reckoning, which is actually not that difficult. It kind of feels difficult when you try to explain it, but but you know, once you've understood, it's weird. Once you've understood it, it's quite simple. Um, or you can also just use the calendar, you know, and follow the rhythm of the year, which is given by this traditional seasonal animism. The calendar has a cross section of holidays from Nordic history religions. For instance, you find the heathen quarter celebrations, such as the Yule moon, the heathen celebration of Yule on the first full moon after the first new moon after the winter solstice. So this is marked on the calendar, right? So you know where to find it, and so you are reminded that now the most important full moon of the Nordic year is approaching, the Yule Moon. And of course you can find the mark uh, of the Yule Moon in the book and read a little article that explains a little bit about it. But there are also more recent folkloric holidays that are also part of Nordic animism, because traditional knowledge and culture of land connectedness is more than anything dynamic and transformational. It's something that moves and grows and changes through the ages and with the land. And it's not, it's, it's supposed to, you know, it's supposed to transform. And it, it's, it's certainly most definitely not supposed to stay static, for instance, as an image of one particular imagined past. I mean, that would be a very strong misunderstanding of how traditional seasonal animism works. Um, the calendar is built up as a traditional runic calendar, which is also a spectacularly beautiful way of reckoning time, where every day around the year is marked by one or two runes that represent its position in relation to the cycles of the sun, a week year, and the cycle of, of, of the moon. And you guessed it, you can get all that explained in the in explanatory book. <laughs> uh, this book is just a little introduction to traditional Nordic calendar and its different aspects. Luni solar reckoning, runic calendar, traditional holidays, month names, and, and, and so on. And uh, importantly, uh, the ways that seasonal animism is being reinvented through the ages and through different holidays. So for instance, the celebration of Saint Eric in the spring seems to reinvent devotion to the god Freyr actually, in this sort of voodoo santeria style of syncretism. And that is actually kind of a thread that runs through the, my understanding of this calendar, the sort of syncretic way, transformational way that animism lives on. Also the transformation of life essences, such as you know, agrarian produce and so, so, so on. That's a really important theme. Holidays, for instance, they aren't these static boxes of meaning that must be in these ordered, symmetric, aesthetic, static, you know, organization. Rather, holidays in traditional reckoning is like they're kind of a system of dynamic lines of transformation that drive the year, transformation of these life essences. And humans participate in these transformations in order to 
create human community in or form human community into a balanced reciprocity uh, with the land, basically. And because of this, on the one hand, uh, the calendar gives you state-of-the-art scientific knowledge of pre-Christian heathen holidays, such as the Deesting, the third full moon of the year, but it also gives you other holidays of more recent provenance, like Hulda's Night or the Lucid Long Night, the old winter solstice. Um, the calendar um, communicates animism as transformational dynamic ways of knowing that we can bring back through transformational dynamic dialoguing with different parts of, uh, of the past. And in making uh, this project, uh, I have been looking for what is animist about specific traditional kinds of reckoning, more than, for instance, striving to give you an exact reckoning system from one specific context in the past, say, Norway in the 10th century or something like that. So through this dialoguing with traditional cultural heritage, I'm trying to bring out the animist aspects of different periods for us to dialogue with. And in order to do that, I'm making it available through the lens of our normal Gregorian calendar. The point is to make the animist logic of reckoning available to normal people. And uh, I'm not sure that this could really be done in a functional way if I had, for instance, chosen one specific reckoning system of the past. Like, for instance, the Icelandic medieval week year, which operates with like leap weeks and conflated days in order to keep the week year calibrated uh, to the sun and so on. Like, in existential terms, this would be extremely difficult to handle. Imagine having Wednesday when everybody else has Saturday. This would risk becoming a kind of an exercise in reckoning nerdship. And that's not very animist. Animism is relation-making, it's kin-making. And this is also why I've tried to translate as much as possible of this material into English. English is a useful contemporary language from the same North Sea context. We, we, we tend to push things away by making them exotic. You know, why use month names such as Heanir, Hurmonal, or Heustmanuther, Heustmonal? You know, why use Danish and Icelandic, you know, except of course if you're Danish or Icelandic, when you might as well use English names, Hay Month, Harvest Month, you know, that's what it means. You know, the point of these traditional month names is to create relating to the year by naming them not after Roman emperors like July and August, but uh, but re but naming them after specific agrarian practices that are characteristic of those times of the year, hay and harvest, not Julius Caesar and Augustus, or exotic words that you don't understand. Um, one particularly beautiful aspect of the old reckoning system that I've kept is the lunisolar calendar, which is represented by runic calendar, which is a lunisolar system. Uh, but we've also had the lunar dates, so you can orient yourself in relation to the lunar months. So, yes, this is the Nordic animist calendar, the calendar which is bringing the traditional seasonal animism into your normal life where it's supposed to be, not in either exotic fantasies or lofty scholarship, but in your life. So we are giving you the Primstaff marks and the runic calendar sort of merged in with your normal calendar date, so, so it, it becomes available. You know? And uh, this material, the wall calendar and the uh, explanatory book, can be uh, procured on my homepage and uh, somewhere around this video There'll be a link to where you can find it. Cool. Thanks for listening and see you around. Step down.